Marvin is a great uh, computer scientist and expert in artificial intelligence. You've dealt with information your whole life, and today, many physicists are looking to information in almost a, almost a mystical way as really sitting beneath the laws of physics. Many physicists disagree with that, but how do you see information uh, as, a, as a fundamental concept in understanding the cosmos? Well, it seems to me that that we're in one of many possible worlds because uh, there could be, one can imagine laws, different sets of laws of physics. Uh, there might be worlds without any laws at all and there's nothing to say about those. And we know a lot about this kind of world. For example, in order for us to be physicists or to think about the kinds of things we're talking about right now, uh, we needed a uh, couple of, nearly a billion years to evolve. It's 500, 400 million years since the first multicellular animals. Well, how come we're here? If the world didn't have conservation laws like, uh, like uh, conservation of momentum or energy, uh, then it probably would have blown up or something. So just from the fact that we're here, we can guess that this world is very stable. It, it has uh, nice laws that nothing violent happens. After all, uh, in order for us to evolve, our DNA has to last a few years, mm -hmm. because, uh, or at least a few minutes, because if the DNA kept changing its shape, there couldn't be any uh, evolution of life. So uh, that's interesting because many people say that quantum mechanics introduces uncertainty into the world. Mm -hmm. But in fact, Newton mechan Newton's mechanics was terrible. If you tried to make an atom out of little planets spinning around each other, we now know that if you have more than three planets or more than three electrons around an atom, it would gradually dissipate. And so it's qu I call this the certainty principle. People, philosophers like to talk about the uncertainty principle okay. where quantum mechanics makes things unpredictable. It's exactly the opposite. The half-life of a molecule of DNA is a billion years at room temperature because quantum mechanics keeps it from changing state. Yes, it has a very small probability of changing state at any moment, but that's very small. So it's a wonderful joke. All these philosophers have missed the point that a deterministic universe is no good. It's chaotic. <laughs> and the quantum universe is stable. So w what does that imply about the nature of physical law, then? Well, I think the idea that the world exists is like adding an extra term to an equation that doesn't belong there. We're in a possible world. There are other possible worlds. Most of them are too chaotic to have anybody in them. Uh, some of them are better than ours. Maybe there are possible worlds that are almost exactly the same, except that you're wearing a blue turtleneck instead of a red one. But the, all we know is that we're in this one, and we have to guess what the laws are. We assume that the laws are stable and that energy is conserved. And of course, this might change 10 minutes from now, and it all goes poof. These possible worlds, are those conceptually possible, or they are possible and they really exist somewhere else? I think the word really exist has no meaning whatever. It's all right to say that this hand is part of this universe. When I say this hand exists, I mean it's in this universe. When I say the universe exists, I think that's a grammatical error. What could it mean? And so it's silly to say the universe exists. There are lots of possible ones, and we're in a possible one. And whether it exists or not, if it obeys the same laws, there's no way to tell. So I don't think the word exist is useful. Well, I mean, we, we can imagine all sorts of worlds. Yeah. And, and do they have a, a, a similar level of... Uh, of, uh, I I'm trying to say this without using the word exist because I know it offends I think you. most of them wouldn't have any interesting processes in them because uh, if you imagined a set of rules, they might be no good. If you imagined a universe where the laws of physics were Newtons, there wouldn't be any animals there. O okay, uh, so those are different kinds of world. One that, mm -hmm. th that, have th that, that has you know, bad physics laws, in other words, has Newton's physics laws. But the fact that they're no good or don't have any animals, that doesn't make them any less uh, 
uh, uh, uh, capable of having existence. It might yeah. have been the case. I, yes, it might I, have been the case that that's all there was ever. Instead I would of replace, this, I'd replace the word existence by possible. Those are possible worlds. This is a possible world. I don't see any reason to add an extra thing to this one saying that this exists. I, I don't see that the word has any meaning. Uh, how, how about some philosophers use the word actualized? That there are lots of possible worlds but at least we know that this one has been actualized. I think they're making a silly mistake, a grammatical one. They're saying the universe is in the universe, so it's special, whereas that sentence didn't mean anything. So uh, uh, what does that imply about what our form of living? Does, does, does that mean this can be a mirage? It could be, an I it could be simulated on somebody else's computer, uh -huh. or, but it doesn't have to be. Because if you have the idea of the program and its processes, then that's enough to determine everything that happens in it. Well, wh what you're saying then is that, I think, that, that, that once we define the laws of this world and things about it, we can't go any further, even in principle, in giving our state of things a, uh, a higher level of, of being than other possible worlds. We in principle, we're unable to do this. I'm saying that it doesn't make any sense to even talk about it. Why, why should this world be green when all the other possible ones are red? What does it mean? Well, to because we're here, and we know, and we see this world. And yes, we, and we the people in those ones are there, and they know, and they see their worlds. But, but we don't, but, but we're saying that's possible, but we're not saying that's actual. We can say this is actual. Yeah, I don't see that those words mean anything. Now they may be. They're like a color that has no color. As far as I can tell, uh, all that talk is nonsense, and it's from making a very serious mistake of thinking that the world has to, e that there has to be something special about one world that's different from all the others. Even though the fact that you know that you're conscious in this world, you know that. Well, all the people in all the possible, if they're, it's the same in all the possible sure. worlds. Sure. But most of them don't have any people because the laws of physics are. Are, are not, they keep exploding, or may bubble universes like Alan Goode's, yeah. <laughs> with different laws of physics, and they go poof. Ours might go poof tomorrow, but. Right, but we know that ours is real today. Well, real is, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's like saying the, u it's like children saying, what's outside the universe? To say, this world exists is adding an extra adjective to the thing that makes no sense. And that, a that extra adjective doesn't add any, any uh, um, ontological, as philosophers say, being, the, the reality of being. I think all these words like reality are empty, and that's why philosophers say the same things now as they said in Plato's time. <laughs> it's nonsense. 